protection my beautiful beautiful Scorpios welcome to first eye visions my name is Q and I'm here to do your general reading I will each and every one of you beautiful souls are feeling amazing grounded balanced and in alignment today is the new moon um, so new energy this is good energy to work with to draw in to call in uh, whether it be abundance whether it be new opportunities um, this is also the day of Mama Oshun, so it's a beautiful energy to work with in terms of, you know, creating, uh, maybe even beauty, uh, attracting love, things um, related to creating is, is going to be a very powerful day to, to uh, hone in on that energy, especially being that it's a new moon as well. So as the moon progressively uh, changes its phases, that means that you are growing in your ability to manifest what you desire. So it's like it's it's growing and it's blooming with each phase. Uh, so on a new moon is a beautiful time to start a new uh, some new spell work or to set your intentions or to perhaps even create like a vision board. Uh, good energy to work with. So I will you all are feeling amazing. Everything is everything on my side of the planet. Today felt like a day for a reading for my beloved Scorpios, for the beloved collective family. Um, I've been navigating the waters myself. So whenever I feel the energy uh, to provide a reading, that is when I love to do it. I don't ever want it to feel forced. Um... I don't want my readings to come off contrived. I want them to be very, very um, fluid. I want the energy to flow. I want the communication, the downloads to come straight from source. So we're going to tap in, tune in, see what's coming in, what's going out, what's going on with the beloved Scorpios. Uh, if you are new here, welcome to the Soul Tribe Soul Family. As I said, my name is Q. I too am a Scorpio. I channel messages intuitively. I am also an empath and I am clairaudient. So during this reading, you will hear me playing music and the way that it works, the name of the song, lyrics within the song, name of the artist, maybe even the timestamp on the clock. It will all correlate to what messages are coming through intuitively as well as what the cards may be showing. Uh, and it all blends very beautifully. Uh, so my spiel here is eat the fish, spit out the bones. Uh, meaning if the reading doesn't apply to you, just let it fly by. Check your natal chart, check your other placements to see what other readings might resonate. Okay. Uh, my readings are also timeless. So whenever you found this video, whenever this video popped up in your feed and you com felt compelled to click play, that was divine timing and in divine order that you have done so. So we shall proceed with the read. But before we do, I'd like to go ahead and do some house cleaning, beloveds. Ashe. I call upon the elements of water, fire, earth, air, ether, and spirit, Ashe. I ask our beautiful angels, archangels, ancestors, ascended masters, spirit guides, deities, animal totems, earth, mother Gaia, universe, source, the divine, most high God, our creator, to shine a powerful, powerful message of love and of light. I call personally upon Baba Obatala, Mama Oya, and Baba Ogun, to bless me with the intuition and discernment of my cards. Help me to pick up on the energy, number synchronicity, and vibrations of my cards. And so it is. So mote it be, beloveds. Ashe, ashe, ashe. So let's see what time we have on the clock and see what we have playing on the playlist. So we have 204 on the clock. That breaks down to six. Six is your first eye. Trust your intuition. Some of you may be having some lucid dreams. Maybe you are being told to use discernment. Maybe there's going to be some sort of action you're going to have to take. I'm seeing like movement. I don't know if you're moving to a different direction, moving into a new position, moving into a new phase or stage in your life, but there's movement. Um, I feel victories. I feel celebrations. I feel a uh, relief. I feel a sigh of relief. Like you've just unburdened yourself or you've just uh, completed a chapter in your life. Uh, I'm also seeing that there's this feeling of harmony, um, a feeling balance, feeling an equilibrium. What we have right now is we have tweet playing. Good Lord, everything's fallen. 
So we have tweet and this is called call me. So uh, six is also, like I said, the first I. So maybe you can sense that there's some sort of message coming through. Maybe someone is kind of communicating with you intuitively or telepathically. Uh, there's definitely someone that would like to communicate with you. Communication. Uh, it, I feel like there's no, is non-existent, but there may be like maybe thoughts, a lot of uh, thoughts of someone, maybe dreaming of a particular person, or maybe someone is dreaming of you. The six is also associated with the lovers. So that is, you know, a powerful partnership union. That's like that yin and yang energy. That particular union is overseen by an angelic figure. So this could speak to something being destined, like a predestined type of connection or spiritual partnership partnership or some sort of sacred connection you have with someone. So this could be uh, in regards to love. Six could also uh, be a sign that this is someone returning from your past. Perhaps this is someone that you have not spoken to, or maybe there was unrequited love at one point in time, or maybe this could have been someone who rejected you, or uh, there could have been a feeling of abandonment or something to that degree. Because before you get to the six, you get the five, and I'm seeing like the five of cups. Um, where there was regret. Now I'm seeing a six of cups where someone could be returning. So it could be any one of those scenarios. Um, let's pull up. Let's see what we have coming in with the numerology deck. So what we have is we have 87, which is 15. That two breaks down to six. And remember, we just started the reading at 204, which is six. So these are two sixes coming straight out of the gate. Uh, and this is saying synchronicity. So something is happening um, it is happening in divine order. It is happening, um, you know, and it's almost like uh, spirit is conspiring behind the scenes to bring this in because synchronicities are uh, events where there is communication or an intervention from either your higher self, your spirit team, your angels, your guides, maybe an ancestor could be communicating with you with call me uh, playing. Um, I'm also getting a feeling like that could just be like, you know, another sense of just your intuition. Something's calling your attention. Something is pulling and, um, tugging at your, your intuition. And with the synchronicity, maybe you're seeing 888-777-666, uh, with six, maybe this will be, um, someone that you will have a very, um, harmonized connection with, as I said, I was feeling synchronization, um, or feeling harmony, which is a form of synchronization. Uh, so it's like a divine counterpart, a divine connection. Um, even if this is you coming into harmony with yourself, finding balance within yourself, being in spiritual alignment, mind, body, and soul, but the synchronicity is a sign that there is, um, a like-mindedness or synergy of some sort. This is beautiful. I love that. And then we have uh, health. So 71 breaks down to eight. So karma, karma is associated with eight, uh, as well as the strength card. So maybe you've learned some karmic lessons. Uh, with this eight, um, I'm getting also like the eight of swords. So I get like cerebral, the mind, someone's up in their head, almost like uh, ruminating or pining over a certain situation is causing stress. It's causing anxiety. Uh, maybe there's overthinking, you know, cause, uh, um, with that eight, I just get the eight of swords. You know, the eight of swords is like when there's just, it's kind of self-imposed mental anguish when you're just constantly up in your head and you're not expressing or emoting. Uh, and I'm getting the mind because that purple deals with the crown chakra, that number seven in 71 deals with the crown and that one deals with the root. So there's like a root cause to the stress. There's something in regards to maybe something wasn't harmonized. Maybe this is in regards to a divine union, a twin flame union, a connection, a business partnership, because the lovers could be love related or it could be something that you love to do. So maybe your business or maybe your career uh, that could be, you know, uh, in correlation to that as well, or in connection to your work dynamics that, that lovers, cause that could be just a partnership or a union, um, you know, as a whole. So let's tap in. So spirit right now we have not gone cry by Mary J Blige. So you could be dealing with someone with Mary in their name, J or B in their, uh, initials, first, middle or last. 
but you're not going to cry. So I feel like, yes, this was a situation that did cause pain. I was picking up like karmic uh, lessons or something karmic. And then on top of that, with that sword, eight of swords, I was getting like mental anguish and with not going to cry. This is like trying to choose head over heart. So trying to be more logical than emotional. Um, the six you know, that the 87 breaks down to, uh, maybe this is, you know, that action that someone took moving away from that, that space of frustration, you know, moving away from like those murky waters, um, those turbulent circumstances or relationships, toxic situations, because before you get the six of swords, which is what I was seeing when I first saw 204 was like moving away, moving on to bigger and better, creating like a safe, a sacred space, um, you know, and moving away, you have to be moving away from something to move towards something better. So that's what I'm getting with that energy. And what not going to cry is just, that's the strength card also that we, um, you know, that that eight represents being strong enough to brave your light, being strong enough to brave the circumstance, the situation, um, telling yourself not to waste your tears. You know, it's okay to cry, be in the motion, but to not be too emotional. Um, you know, to, to feel your feels, but not allow yourself to get swept up emotionally, especially as a Scorpio, that is, you know, that is something that you have to, to learn to balance, you know, is because we are emotional beings. So you do have to be emotionally, you have to, uh, you know, um, elevate to become emotionally intelligent, you know, so let's tap into it. And so what is the overall energy for my beloved Scorpios? Everything is kind of flipping out. There we go. Let me fix this. Give my cards a bang, bang, boogie. We're not going to cry. So, yeah, not going to cry. Maybe you've shed enough tears and you're like, I'm not crying no more over that situation. Let me get two more shuffles and then we're going to cut the deck. And I just saw karmic completion and I was speaking to that as well. You know, wrapping up a cycle, you know. All right. Not going to cry. Yeah. You, there's no reason to cry. If anything, it's like, you should be proud. I'm getting a, a, like, cause I was seeing a celebration. I was seeing victories and breakthroughs as well with the six, the six of wands. It speaks to that as well. You know, so like moving out of difficult circumstances, turbulent circumstances, murky waters, you know, and into something bigger and better. And we have here teaching and learning. And this is 57, which breaks down to 12. That's three. So that's like the energy of divine feminine energy. Divine masculine is the emperor. Uh, so, you know, even if you're divine masculine, you could be tapping into your feminine energy, but this three is the empress. So that speaks to creativity that speaks to birthing new ideas and ways of thinking. This speaks to, you know, braving your light. That three is also associated with the solar plexus. So that's about your confidence. That's about your, your will. That's about your courage, your, your wise dome, like healing from past pains, wounds, traumas, um, that is also the sun that shines within you. So in order for the sun to shine within you, you would have to heal. You would have to go through those, uh, moments of introspection. Um, and also taking the time out to, you know, really gain an awareness to assess your situation or your circumstance and healing from past pains. Like I said, the three is also the three of swords I'm seeing, you know, where you were betrayed or duped or you were hurt, you know, you were deceived, you were, um, you were, you were, um, you may have went through a loss, you know, a sudden loss, an emotional loss, maybe the death of a loved one, uh, just the demise of a relationship in its entirety, the breakup of a family. Um, this is like a separation. This is like a severance of um, alliances. You know, this is the destroy. Uh, so this is something that could have destroyed you or broke you down and you had to rebuild, build yourself back up to be that empress. So this is about self mastery, teaching and learning. So there was a circumstance, a karmic lesson that you learned from, uh, and it's taught you how to adjust your crown. It's taught you how to, uh, own your power, how to manifest, how to set your intention. And more importantly, to know your worth and your value. So now you have that self-awareness, you know, who you are, you know, what you represent, beautiful energy. And with this 55 on the bottom of the deck and we're about to pull the energy for the uh what you're attracting to you it's saying you're attracting more adventure so this means that there's going to be more spontaneity in your life there's going to be more um you know just more of a zest to live like you're just going to be more daring more risky uh with this 55 that breaks down to 10 uh so some sort of ending there was an ending of perhaps just this um this kind of like uh maybe you were very uh 
routine. Maybe you were very kind of like not really adventurous, you know, just more so kind of regimented and and there's an alarm going off. So that that was something that I feel like spirit is saying, uh, OK, let's let that go. So that was something that was more like of a hindrance I'm getting because with the siren, siren always denotes like, you know, just a, a cause of alarm and maybe the lack of excitement, the lack of um, adventure in your life. It just became very bleak. It became very dull. You you were discontent, bored, you know, and now there's going to be like this new beginning because 55 breaks down to 10, which is an ending of something. So there's an end of no adventure. And but the 10 reduces to one, which now becomes a new beginning. So every ending denotes a new beginning. So now in this new beginning, there's a change. There's a change because you're meeting a like mind. Double numbers always give me a sense that you're attracting someone that's on your frequency and your vibration. Um, and remember, we came out with two sixes out the gate. So that was another uh, double number. So that's someone coming in who's just as intuitive, just as psychic, who's using their intuition, who sees you as a like mind or a lover or a yin to their yang, yang to their yin. So it's another energy of synchronization. But this 55, five deals with the throat chakra. And remember, we had tweets singing, call me. So this is someone you're not communicating with verbally um, or communicating uh, orally, however you want to say it. But this is someone that you may think of constantly or you find yourself thinking of them or they find themselves thinking of you or there could be dreams or so those type of communications, intuitive or telepathic type of communications. Maybe someone is astral traveling and visiting another in their dreams. Um, but this is an energy. What I'm seeing with this is like there's someone manifesting because the one is dealing with the magician. It's also a new beginning. So someone could be manifesting a new start, a fresh start, some sort of um exciting um new it's like they want to uh rekindle something here with the one that's also a very felicious number so i'm getting a sense of like a very strong attraction as well and one and this three from the 57 is four so this could be a divine masculine because the four is associated with the emperor so i do feel like you know this is someone that's trying to match your fly your vibration your frequency uh if you are an empress you're only going to align yourself with an emperor because an empress knows her worth she doesn't settle uh she doesn't you know, she doesn't settle for less. She knows her worth. So she expects the best of things. Um, same as that, you know, the, the emperor is the same way. So with this energy teaching and learning, that's typically uh, the way that um, a divine connection union will um, spark. There will be one person teaching whilst the other is learning from that other partner. That's usually the twin flame. Remember, these both break down to four. Four is associated with the heart chakra. Four is also associated with the 1111 twin flame number because four is the vibration of 1111. 1111 is the vibration of four. So this is a twin flame union. We saw the six, remember, and the six is associated with the lovers in traditional tarot, the major arcana, and the lovers is a divine union that's overseen by an angelic figure. So I do feel this is spirit saying this is a twin flame. Uh, we have Guapoli singing Catch-22. So there is going to be some sort of catch. There's going to be something if this person does uh, come towards you. And remember, 22 reduces to four. And this number here that I'm breaking down is four. Twin flame, divine masculine, the emperor, that's four. So this catch 22, I feel like this person is someone that either you're catching this person's attention um, or you could have captured this person's heart because 22 breaks down to four. Catch 22 breaks down to four. That's the heart chakra. Uh, four is also the emperor. So someone definitely feels a divine connection and union with you. And they're going to take you on this adventure. This is going to be a beautiful ride. This is going to be a beautiful ride because this five and this five, I feel both of you have learned tremendously. Like you've learned valuable lessons um, because that's dealing with the hierophant, the five. And so it's it's almost as if you both have spiritually grown wiser or grew wiser. You've learned from your karmic lessons. You've learned from some of your uh, 
uh, past circumstances and they have taught you to be your authentic self. They have taught you to be, um, you know, to live life to the fullest and not be so, uh, restricted, you know, to not have so many restrictions, to not be so isolated, to not isolate yourself, but to take a leap of faith, try things, do different things. Cause this adventure card is really saying that it's time to, you know, live life on the edge almost, you know, it's time to, to, you know, brave, be, be brave, be bold, be daring. Um, so that's beautiful. So let's tap in. So what is our beautiful Scorpios attracting to them? Who or what is our beautiful Scorpios attracting to them? Let me get a message of peace, power, and protection for my beautiful Scorpios. So this catch 22, I got all of your messages there. The bottom of the deck, we have pride 19. So that 19 breaks down to 10. So this is an ego death. 10 is an ending. So this ego death is obviously waking someone up to some sort of truth, maybe waking up to perhaps their stubbornness or their manipulation, um, you know, because when you're proud, uh, that speaks to, you know, kind of trying to uh, overcompensate for where you may have uh, some, where you may fault where you may have some flaws, if you will. So you will overcompensate, you know, with the ego and the pride and, you know, and, and so when there's a death of that, I feel like there's because this is because there was some sort of enlightening moment. There was some sort of, uh, you know, sudden epiphany that someone may have had. These are two tens. So this is like right after this ego death, it's like, you know, someone takes the time to go within to assess themselves. You know, this is like doing that, that, um, that internal work, you know, ones are uh, associated with the root chakra. So I do feel like someone started to get down to the root cause, perhaps of an issue or where this pride, where the ego comes from or where this false identity comes from. What flew out is you have 13, which is the four. So this is what you're attracting to you. You're attracting someone that's matching your fly, someone that's been learning. So with this 13, that's associated with the death card. So there's someone who has had an ego death and it's because they've been making the effort to change. They've been making the effort to heal, to grow. They've had an enlightening moment because that yellow deals with the solar plexus. It's also the color of the sun. So I feel like there was some sort of illumination or some something that they've learned, obviously, by watching you. And this is someone who's now making the effort. I feel like they've opened up their heart chakra. Um, perhaps opened up their heart, they've healed their heart, they see something uh, very clearly, maybe they've healed from past pains, wounds and traumas. Uh, and now it's like they are being more, um, they're more assertive or more, more confident. How they feel about you is manifestation. This is the number eight. So this is really, you know, they see you as a wish fulfillment. They see you manifesting like master manifesting or creating, uh, being super productive with your time, with your energy. You got four in this eight. So that breaks down to, um, what is that? Eight and four. That breaks down to 12. So that's another three. So I feel like they see you as an empress. They see you as their kindred spirit, their soulmate, their twin flame. They see you as very beautiful. They could be like planning, preparing and strategizing to come towards you. They also feel heartbroken being in separation, like being away from you, um, not communication, not communicating. They could be planning and preparing, like I said, to come towards you because I'm also seeing like the three. All of this breaks down to three. So with the 78 spirit career, this is what's hidden. So if you have been embarking on some sort of new uh, career choice, like I said earlier, I feel like there's a victory ahead for you. I feel like there's some sort of success because this three and the six breaks down to nine. So I'm seeing like the nine of pentacles. I'm seeing like your hard work paying off. Like you've been really setting intention. You've been really uh, planting your seeds and, and cultivating, nurturing, watering, and sowing in good faith, just speaking positively about your circumstance, setting your intentions, doing your rituals, just paying homage, giving offerings, you know, doing things to ensure um, that there's a wish fulfillment or ensuring that there is a blessing or something being um, being an, an answered prayer. Because this spiritual career is the 78 card. And remember earlier, we saw the 87, which was synchronicity. So some of you could be seeing like, 888s, 777s, you could be seeing those number combinations, and those numbers are associated with abundance, luck, 
wish fulfillment, blessings, prosperity, success. And for this to be uh, the flip side of that, I feel like something you're embarking upon. Remember, we saw 55 adventures. So you and your divine counterpart could go into business together and have like a spiritual uh, pro um you know, a spiritual partnership with someone, but it will also be a love partnership. This is someone that you will, you know, probably collaborate with um, and and both provide some sort of spiritual services, whether it be cardomancy, whether it be consultations, whether it be self-help, whether it be writing books, authoring books, having podcasts, whether it be making music, whether it be, um, you know, teaching and learning, disseminating information. Uh, but this is like something that you're doing and it's, it's bringing abundance. It's bringing success. It's bringing a prosperity, wish fulfillment. We have nine completion here. So this is the outcome. So you have completed a cycle, which is what I did say. And that's why this 19 pride is here. So this is like getting out of that space of operating from, you know, uh, almost like a spirit of, of, um, it's like, I don't want to say, uh, I don't know how to, to, to describe it, but when you are operating, this is like not being your authentic self. So it's like getting rid of the mask. It's like, you know, stripping away the mask and, and showing your true self, showing who you truly are. So that's powerful. I do love that. I love that for y'all. So let's tap in. So let's get a message from, what do I want to get a message from? Let's get a message from, I'm feeling this, uh, golden deck here black and gold edition and look what's on the bottom of the deck I can't make this up the nine of pentacles beloved you see that I just spoke to the nine of pentacles with this uh this three and this uh what you call it here that six and I was saying how you were seen as this, you know, this energy of someone who's worked very hard to achieve what you have. This is someone single. This is someone that is self-made. You know, they've worked hard to achieve their success to, you know, they're not someone that shies away from hard work. And with this nine and nine, because you got three, this is four, that's seven, seven and eight, that's 15, that's six, six and six, that's 12, that's three three and nine. So that's uh, still three. So three. So that's divine feminine energy. This is pre empress energy right here. I mean, like this is, you're literally pre empress, everything you have, you've done it on your own. You've worked hard on your own. You've planted seeds. This is beautiful. And you have this night knight of wands on the split. So we're going to tap in and see. So it looks like things are moving quickly. Things are moving quickly. I feel like you are, uh, you know, transforming some things in your life. Things are changing. And there goes the strength card, you know, so you have to had to, you know, brave your light to take action, you know, doing things sometimes that you really didn't want to do, but you've had to brave those circumstances, no matter how difficult it was and make decisions that were, um, you know, were hard. You could have been stuck at a fork in the road. Maybe this is someone who was stuck in a fork in the road. I was picking up on like the sense of like a decision as well, you know, moving away from something that was just like really toxic, not really serving your highest good and choosing, you know, choosing what makes you happy. You know, he's he's seen holding like what appears to be like a globe. So this could speak to like moving to a whole new, you know, a whole different direction, you know, moving into a whole different career. You know, maybe this is someone who thinks the world of you, you know, someone making a decision to come towards you. The siren is going off yet again. So this is a forewarning. You know, maybe someone has um, already made a choice. And with the queen of swords here, see that? So it's like you're giving someone, when I look at it from this angle, it makes more sense than them being back to back. So it's like it's someone coming back. Like I said, I was getting a sense of like, you know, someone from your past that could have rejected you or there was unrequited love. Um, and this Queen of Swords just gives me a sense of like you learning from the past. So now you're using logic. You're not necessarily letting your heart make decisions for you. Um, and that's what I was feeling earlier. Like you're cho choosing, you're doing things head over heart now. Someone could have been in the past stuck between uh, two people. You know, this is like, you know, there's another wand behind him. So there was obviously like a choice or a decision. Uh, someone you could have potentially cut off or you're going to make a decision this time around to cut them off. I feel with the communication, you're open to have some sort of dialogue with someone. Because remember with Call Me, I feel like you may receive a message uh, from some. We have Cat Dahlia, My Shoes. 
So someone is definitely, they've walked a mile in your shoes because karma definitely called for that. So someone had a taste of karma because we got justice here. So things are going to be handled fairly and justly for you. I also get a sense, like I said, karma played a factor. Someone could have been, you know, kind of like choosy, a choosy lover and uh, unable to decide what they wanted. And, um, you know, karma set, set in, karma kicked in rather. And um, maybe this is a decision that they were uh, forced force and there goes the lovers remember i was speaking to the lovers so there goes the lovers so it is it, it i feel like what is what is the reason why justice is here someone could have been married someone could have had uh been even if it's not a, like a legal marriage maybe it was common law marriage maybe they were living with another person but i feel like there was some sort of uh connection here uh, and someone had to sever that before they could take action and there goes the five of pentacles right underneath that and remember i was speaking to someone being abandoned rejected and that could have been you that felt that way because someone was still tied to another person but this is how this person feels about you that you're attracting is the six remember the lovers because we had the six open up and there goes the angel overseeing it and i was feeling they were conspiring behind the scenes for justice to show up i feel that there was some sort of you know, dissolution of a marriage or separation. Someone had to leave something behind. This is justice. So it's it's being worked out in your favor. Something's working out in your favor. I feel like this is like spirit is saying that. Someone had to learn, obviously, some lessons. See that? The Ten of Swords, feeling backstabbed, betrayed, deceived. That's those feelings. This is why you were, you know, teaching another person and learning um, at the same time, you could be the teacher and the student at the same time. There goes the hierophant I spoke to. This is what I'm saying. You had to learn, maybe sitting at the feet of an elder, master teacher, Sufi, a spirit practitioner, Reiki healer, a pastor preacher, an elder, an ancestor, you know, just, you know, dedicating time in front of an altar, healing from this, but also learning and growing. You was in the dark about a lot of things. A lot of people close to you betrayed you. A lot of people did backstabbed you, left you for dead, and you learned, um, unfortunately, the hard way, um, you know, that people aren't to be trusted, you know, don't ever hurt the ones you love, you know, and that's what the lesson, you know, some of these people had to learn because they received karma for whatever they did to you. So don't hurt the ones you love. And I was just listening to um, Belle Biv DeVoe tell me, when will I see you smile again? And that line stuck out. Right now we have uh, Cat Dahlia still singing in my shoe or my shoes. So someone definitely had to walk a mile in your shoes after they hurt you. See that? This is what they had to go through, teaching and learning. You was carrying heavy burdens. You was dealing with a lot of betrayal. You felt like nobody was showing up for you. You wasn't delegating also, like when you needed help, you wasn't asking. That's why that pride was showing up because maybe you too had too much pride to ask for help. Maybe because, you know, you just learned like, you know, when you need people, they don't show up, you know. But with my shoes, I feel like some folks, their karma was they had to walk a mile in your shoes. They sat there judging you, you know, but then they had to walk a mile in your shoes because this is why they learned a lesson. With this 13, this is their karma. That's a death. So the death was, you know, maybe they had to go through some sort of painful loss, the same as they've inflicted upon you that same pain. It's like they had to go through that same karmic lesson. With this ten of uh, nine of swords, this is up at night, ruminating, waking up during cold, you know, in cold sweats, during them witching hours, having nightmares, d dreaming. Remember, I saw the eight of swords. This is the nine of swords. So this is even like, this is even worse because they waking up you know, from cold sweats, can't go to bed because they resting on a guilty conscience. And this is that person you're attracting with effort. Maybe someone's regret, regretting not making the effort, regretting, regretting not taking action, having, you know, major regrets for the decisions they've made in the past. And this is a divine masculine. We have touch Omarion playing. So this is someone that wants to touch you like they, they probably wake up like you know, having dreams of you thinking that they're holding you and touching you, th feeling like, you know, thinking you're in their arms or you're in their life. And then they wake up and it's like, damn, they're alone. They're in this bed alone. There's no one there. It's dark. This is the same energy we just saw with the Ten of Swords, that same darkness that you felt, that same pain that was afflicted upon you, where you had all them swords to the back. Now this person is 
right there because remember justice showed up this is about karma what you put out you get back what goes around comes around that's why it would behoove you to you know plant seeds in good faith be kind be you know be be love and light you know when you send out negative energy that ish going boomerang right on back to you so let's tap 10 why is this 13 effort here for who our beloved scorpios are attracting to them let me get a message of peace power and protection spirit why is 13 here for our beloved and get a message of peace power and protection see they all hush hush they don't want to say a word you know this is because they this is that person that's up in their head a lot because they're not speaking and there it is that's the magician they trying to manifest you back you know this is someone who was very manipulative in the past very manipulative this three and this one and this one breaks down to five so five is right like that's what they truly desire, the throat chakra, is to communicate. Remember, we had call me playing by tweet. So this person does want to communicate. So they could be trying to, like, you know, manifest this with Omarion playing touch, you know. So, you know, they really are trying to manifest some sort of new connection because they do love you. I feel like their heart is open to you. Like, they've opened up their heart chakra. This is that person, like I said, the three of swords. I can't make this up. So they're trying to manifest you back because they've made mistakes in the past. I see the five of swords also where this was someone very smug. They could have said things that like they wish they could take back. That's why they were feeling a lot of regret. That's why that nine of swords showed up because they was like they like probably replaying certain things that they've said or, you know, certain scenarios, opportunities that they missed out on, you know, it, that they looking back at like, dang, you know. And now that they know what they know about whoever they chose over you, it's like they're really, really feeling it, you know. But with this effort, they, they, they're they really regretting not making the effort. And they're really uh, trying to muster up the strength uh, to communicate, you know. This is someone that really wants to communicate. And, but how they feel about you is the three of swords. They're heartbroken. This is someone that definitely had some third party shenan shenanigans going on because you see three swords. So that's telling me that there was definitely another person, another party in the mix and these clouds is like it's obvious that everybody wasn't in the know. There was some confusion around or surrounding matters of the heart. There was definitely a lot of tears shed. And that's why we had not going to cry because I feel like you've cried enough with manifestation. What did I say? This person's trying to manifest you back. This is the person that could have broke your heart or whatever they did to you. It's like they're feeling it tenfold. They're feeling it so much because they've it's like what they put out, they got back. They attracted what they were. And we have Monica, I mean, Mo, uh, Mona Lisa, this is called Can't Be Wasting My Time. So they know that you are very particular. They know that you don't play, uh, you don't take too kindly to anyone insulting your intelligence. They also know that you see time as currency now. So you value your time. You're not going to be playing games with people. You're not going to be playing mind games. So this is someone that definitely is... Um, I feel like they're fearful of losing you with this manifestation. That's why this magician is here because they're really working on trying to manifest you. Why is this eight manifestation here for how they feel about our beloved Scorpios and a card flipped over? See that? The Knight of Swords. So this is what they want to do. They want to rush in. What can't be wasting my time. It's like how they feel about you is that you might chew their head off or chop their head off because the knight of swords is like you see how he's like look at his face is deranged even the horse is like scared he's like please don't wear that damn sword around my head like what wh wh what are you doing and which you can't be wasting my time maybe they feel like you if they do reach out to you you know that you you're, you're going to be uh defensive or you know maybe you're going to come off like that queen of swords someone very like real hot real bitchy icy you know they see you as somebody that you know you might be still in your feelings um but this is because they they listen into you know some of their friends you know maybe they listen to the wrong folks this is a bunch of people who don't know which way is up which way is down it's all a bunch of confusion this is the da dun da dun crew that's what I call this energy, the da dun da dun crew. Nobody knows nothing, you know. And so with you can't be wasting my time, I feel like this is what, you know, how they feel about you is like they got to leave all of that nonsense behind. You know, now they realize like, dang, they, they sat there listening to this crazy mess. And that's why you're defensive is because this is what how they came off. Very conflicted, say one thing, did the other, you know, just conflicted. And now that's why they are choosing to 
go in another direction because whoever they was dealing with, this is what came along with it. Just everybody's opinions, maybe, the you know, their, their family's opinions, friends, everybody listening to all this nonsense. And it's like it, you you hear things so much clearer, you know, when you when it's just your thoughts, you and your thoughts. When you got this many people in your ear causing that much confusion, it's like you got to get away from that. You got to separate from that. And so now this person is probably, you know, planning like how to re-enter your life because they think the world of you. This is someone, remember that one I was seeing, that wand, that ace of wands, and I was saying it was fallacious. That's like they're taking the staff to manifest. It's obvious this is someone attempting to manifest you back in their life. And what you can't be wasting my time, it's like they know that you're not, um, that you don't take too kindly to anybody coming in and causing disruption or confusion or distracting you from what you're doing because you're busy. Like what's hidden is you have this energy. So let's tap in. Why is the five of why is the um spiritual career here for how for what's hidden in the energy for our beloved Scorpios? Let me get a message of peace, power and protection. Wow, you got two messages. Thank you. Finish the shuffle. And you have the moon here. So things that are hidden. This is also about what's in the shadows. Look at that. I can't make this up. What did I say about learning? This is literally this card, teaching and learning. This is what you've done. And that's why you are, you know, your, your, your spirit is pruning you, you know, spirit has pruned you, I should say. That's why you are in this position now to run the spiritual career because of the lessons you've learned from abandonment whether as a child, whether in a relationship, this is abandonment, this is rejection, this is feeling alone. But these, these were lessons that taught you to get into equilibrium, spiritual alignment, you know, to, to find your authentic self, to find who you are. You had to go th grow through this experience. This was definitely m a lesson for you to learn. You see how strong his arm looks? It's like that strong is cock diesel. That's how strong you got. That's why that strength card showed up because you had to learn to to brave your light. You had to learn to take your power back. You had to learn to own your power. What's hidden in the energy is someone else could be wrapping up a cycle with completion in the moon. You could be dealing with someone that's a cancer as well. The magician, it could be an Aries. It could be a. Um, yeah, I'm getting Aries energy with the magician. But this is definitely, I feel like something that uh, spirit, this was destined. Like you had to go through this. It's like you had to grow through this. As I said earlier, like most twin flame um, partnerships are literally like just like this, where one person is teaching and the other is learning from that person. And when you first come into union, it's like you feel that initial attraction it's like synergy it's chemistry it's all that feels like you've met that person that's because that's letting you know like this is a very you know a, a spiritual partnership but there are things that are not aligned you know that has to be worked on prior to coming into union with one another so look at the empress and i spoke to the empress earlier this is that energy this empress is the one that has wrapped up a cycle, completed a cycle. There's also someone who's, you know, leaving behind perhaps, you know, an ex-wife. We have, have you seen her here by Donnell Jones? So someone's absolutely like looking for you because they've just wrapped it up a cycle. They think of you as the empress. Yeah, they just wrapped up a cycle. All right. And you can see the star hiding behind that. So they're secretly praying, wishing, hoping but this is what they're going through. Someone's going through a tower moment. They're going through a breakup. This is um someone definitely leaving a marriage or leaving a situation and, you know, sending up those prayers and petitions to get that wish fulfillment. This is dope. I love this. So with this quint completion, why is completion here? Why is this completion card here for the outcome for my beloved Scorpio? See the six of cups. Somebody's returning. This is somebody that was stuck at a fork in the road. You can see the fork in the road is stuck at a crossroads and he's going off to go and go backwards. And now this person is going to double back to apologize, to come back, you know, with have you seen her? Somebody's searching for you. They could be doing some online, um, you know, searches, Google searching your name, putting your name in the, you know, in the search engine and looking up your address or whatever. It's like people are looking for you. There goes the reuniting and it feels so good card. You know, that's what that is. Someone is coming back for you. They're claiming you because this is the three of cups. That's rejoice re and celebration. We have you seen it. They're going to find you. I feel like if this is a masculine looking for a feminine energy, 
he's going to find his, that feminine energy or vice versa. She's going to find that person. This could be someone you haven't spoken to in a while. This is like, this is someone you have not spoken to in a little minute. And um, someone is doing some searching. They researching to, to find a number, a location, something. Why is this nine completion here? Hanged man, learning, seeing something completely different now. There goes that epiphany. There goes that aha. And that's why they're wrapping up the cycle. Because it's like now they see something crystal clear. They're seeing that, you know, perhaps past actions that wasn't working for them. But they also recognize and realize who their true empress is, their true, true divine feminine. This is even you realizing your own power because this 12 that this uh, hangman is also reduces to three. So that could just be speaking to you realizing your own worth, your own value, whether you're an empress or an emperor, like just realizing your power, realizing, you know, who you are, what you are capable of, you know, what you deserve you know, really answering your heart's truest desires. So that Empress energy is absolutely everything that I was saying earlier. So we're going to get some messages from Energy Oracle. And then we're going to pull a couple messages from my deck that I created. And then we're going to wrap it up. So let's see what we got. Love. So look at what, look what's hiding in there. Healer of the Ages. So, yeah, you all are absolutely healers. We have blossoming abundance here. So something is blossoming. Seeds that you've sown. That's another three. The empress creates. The empress nurtures. The empress is a nurturer. She is a creative. She's maternal. You know, she is the matriarch. So you are aware of your power. We have burn playing by Emma. So with burn, I do feel like, you know, there were circumstances that you uh, endured. Um, you felt burned. You felt backstabbed. You felt betrayed. You felt deceived. That's also telling me, like, you know, you have transformed, like, that phoenix rising from the ashes, you know. And that's why this blossoming abundance is here because it's like, you know, you're receiving rewards and recognition. And we have the fourth chakra, Archangel Raphael, and I spoke to that earlier as well. So Archangel Raphael is the one I feel that's repairing your heart, even the person that you're attracting to you. I feel like he has a lot to do, you know, with conspiring uh, to bring you into union or into partnership with a divine counterpart, because that is showing like twin flame energy. And it is 1111 on the clock right now, as I said that. That's dope. So this this beautiful angel, because uh, I was telling you uh, the lovers is overseen, you know, by an angel. And um, for Archangel Mikael, I mean, Archangel Raphael. So Archangel Mikael is protecting this union because it is sacred. You know, when I feel you have a very sacred connection or bond, Archangel Mikael tends to show up. The angels tend to show up because they're protecting that union. That means there's work for you to do. True twin flame unions, they they have work to do. They have a, a, a soul family, a soul tribe. They have a divine purpose, a, a divine path and mission that they are to embark on. Look at that heartbreak you know, broken heart. And, and this was the lesson, not only for you, but for whomever you are attracting to you. That's why there was uh, that synchronized, you know, synchronicity card, because it's really showing how you all are mirroring one another. Uh, it's like doing that shadow work. You have to do your shadow work. So that's powerful. There goes the victory. Remember, I told you I saw a victory on the split. So you're victoriously overcoming a lot of these burdens that we see, you know, that you've had to endure. This is disappointment after disappointment, heartache after heartache, you know, betrayal after betrayal, you know, people you love, people you trusted, you know, and I'm hearing that again, you know, don't hurt the ones you love. And it was the ones that love you, you know, the ones that love you, the ones you love, the ones closest to you are the ones that's going to hurt you the most, unfortunately, Scorpios, because you don't let too many people in. And it's always the ones that you have allowed in that have the capacity or the ability to hurt you. But look how you reign. You reign victorious. You know, you reign victorious regardless of how things, uh, you know, appear. And with this seventh chakra, trust your intuition. That's your crown. So let's tap in, beloveds. Let's see what's coming in, going out, going on. There goes somebody watching you. I told you you had someone watching you. And remember, we saw that four and I spoke to the emperor. And we also were seeing, you know, that heart chakra. I was seeing the heart chakra. And he's just holding this heart and he's just watching. You know, and that's the number 45, that's nine. So this is a positive change that's taking place. 
This is someone that's like a wish fulfillment. This is that person that could potentially be, you know, either, you know, you're manifesting this person or they're manifesting you. Whoever this is, they will be intentional. They will make the effort. They will show you. They love you. You know, they will, they will take you out on, you know, they'll do a little picnics with you, little walks, little trips, you know, take you out to eat, do little massages. It's very loving, this energy, very warm, very loving. And with burn, I feel like this is someone, because the song that's playing is burn by Emma. So someone could be dealing with someone named Emma, um, first, middle, or last, or someone with an E. But I feel like this is someone who's, they, they have a burning desire for you, passion. This is someone that's really attracted to you. Look at that. Caring connections. So you're coming into a caring connection. Someone could be leaving something behind. You know, or this could just be alluding to the fact that, you know, that same person that was making a decision with the two of wands that we saw is coming towards you. You know, they've left something behind and they're coming towards you because they feel like they could have this, this, you know, new caring connection, this new bond. And we have don't let go of love. So this is someone that may have betrayed you, rejected you. There was unrequited love. There was someone who was stuck at a fork in the road. We got in vogue singing don't let go of love so this is someone that doesn't want to let you go this is someone that refuses to let you go they they are holding on to you holding on to this connection so let's tap in beloveds my spirit of peace power and protection let me get a message from my beloved scorpios what's it gonna be and there goes the solar plexus the third chakra which i spoke to and that's what you had to do you know, this is bravery. This is strength. This is healing. You know, this is also, you know, going with your gut instinct to let things be what they are. Let them fall. Let the chips fall where they may. But you've learned some things. You've learned about how strong you are. You've built confidence. You're more assertive now. You speak your truth. And I feel like, you know, you, you really learned to uh, be more courageous and more bold to take action according to what felt good to you. What, what did I say about someone being stuck at a fork in the road, being indecisive, not knowing what they wanted, and that's the reason why they had those regrets? This is that person's energy we're about to pull, indecision. They were indecisive, and with what you, what's it going to be, don't let go of love. They've never let go of you, even though they could have been in a whole full-blown marriage, whether it was you know common law or legal. Maybe they were living with someone, and it just felt like they were in a marriage. But whatever this is, this is why... You know, there was um, some issues. That's the eight, karma. So someone received karma. They could have been playing with two people's feelings, two people's emotions, toying with people in and out, impulsive, uh, flighty. And they had to pay for that because remember, justice showed up. So I feel like you could have moved away from that energy. Why is this 13 effort and the magician here for what our beloved Scorpios are attracting to them? Let me get a message of peace, power, and protection. There was a card that flew. Let's grab that. So it says the thinking man. So that's exactly what this person is doing. What did I say? What's it going to be? Because I can't pretend. Don't you want to be more than friends? Hold me tight and don't let go. Don't let go. That's that's the En Vogue song. I didn't want to scream in your ear because they sing it really high. But this is what they're doing. This is somebody trying to manifest you back. This time, they're going to be very intentional. They're going to make the effort. They're going to speak to you. They're going to be communicative. They're going to do all the things that they failed to do in the past. And this is one, one. This, so this is five. This is six. So this all breaks down to six. Remember, the reading started with the number six. So this is someone from your past returning. Remember the five we saw? I was seeing the five of uh, cups where someone has regrets and rejected you. You know, I even saw the five of pentacles where there was rejection and abandonment because they could have chose someone else over you. And now there's heavy regret and remorse for that because they was at the nine of swords. But this is someone now trying to manifest you back into their life. They're thinking of a master plan with this 46. What is that? 46. That's one. That's the same as the magician, which is one. So they're trying to manifest you. And they even speaking to the angels, their ancestors, you know, calling you in, asking for assistance, asking for aid. what they have on their mind is marriage, because I see these, you know, these uh, these pillars and these archways, which usually denotes um, like marriage. So this is someone that like they love you, you know, because that 13 breaks down to four. 
So I feel like that's one of the lessons they've learned, you know, from watching you. It's like they've learned to appreciate you. They, I don't think they really valued you or appreciated you. Or maybe they didn't even pay attention to how they truly felt. This is how they feel about you. The queen of coins, you know, woman holding a coin. They see you as someone very abundant with this eight manifestation. They see you as a master manifester. They see you as someone who takes action. You speak your mind now, you know, but they also feel... You know, like you are uh, very nurturing, very maternal, very domestic, very successful even, you know, very intuitive, you, you're, you're self-sufficient, you're also uh, someone who's very practical or resourceful. You like the finer things in life, like you don't you don't want no flim flam <laughs> stuff, like you, you like the finer things in life, you know. You also love cats, you could be very intuitive. They see you as someone very intuitive and also someone who's very grounded. Like they see you as someone grounded, very balanced in alignment. They see you as having fortune, fame, just a wish fulfillment. This is how they feel about you. They see you as a wish fulfillment. And we have um, Jill Scott, not like crazy. So they don't see you as uh, crazy. Maybe they called you crazy in the past. Maybe they see, maybe they're crazy, you know, in love because this is another 42 that's six. So this is someone that, you know, they love you. They, they, they're they crazy about you, but not like crazy, crazy, but they're crazy about you. Yeah, they, they, they see you as like you got your own, you know, because remember, we saw that nine of pentacles and, and, and single, you know, you're single, you're independent, you're self-sufficient. And you've realized that your independence was, you know, the foundation for your happiness, for your peace, for your joy. How they feel about you is all tied up. They feel stuck. You know, they feel stuck. They feel like they don't know what to say. You know, it's like cat got their tongue with this 23. Maybe they feel like you're, you know, blocked off. You're not communicating with them because that's a five. So this five and this eight is 13. So they feel like you've cut them off. They feel like, you know, they feel kind of like stuck, like they don't know what to say. It's like they're up in their head too much. You know, they, they almost feel um, a restraint. And with Jill Scott, maybe you're dealing with someone named Jill or Scott, first, middle, or last. But I'm also getting a sense like they feel you're a beautiful human because the name of the album is Beautifully Human. So I do feel like someone feels you're a beautiful human and they feel really stuck. They don't know how to approach you. They don't know what to say because this 23 breaks down to five. That is, you know, the throat chakra. So it's like they want to say something, but they don't know what to say. They don't know how to say it. And we got the door to romance here. And I was saying that you may, you know, come into a partnership, not only a spiritual partnership, you know, work related but also love related because you have the door to romance here so you know you have by you tapping into your divinity as a divine feminine or divine masculine it's like you're opening yourself up you're just very receptive to all the good spirit has for you there's a lot of rewards and a lot of blessings for what you've been through but this door to romance that's the 33 the six the lovers it's like this is going to be someone that has the key to your heart i feel this is someone that is going to Yeah, this is someone that's really like they they're going to propose, you know, I just I get proposal, I get marriage. I feel like you know, even like whatever you're doing, as I said, I feel like this is going to make for a very powerful uh business connection. And it's all from what you've learned. You know, that's why we shouldn't Hold on to animosity and resentment. We should always show compassion and forgiveness because it's like what we grow through, we could use that to our advantage and help others, you know, and that's what I feel spirit is saying here. So why is 78 spiritual career, five of pentacles and the hierophant here for what's hidden in the energy for my beautiful Scorpios? Let me get a message of peace, power and protection spirit. Okay, so that one is there. Yep. So something you do intuitively, psychically, intu and um, channeling information. Maybe you are a scryer. Maybe you're a musician. I feel like spirit is definitely saying trust your intuition. You've learned to trust your intuition. You're in spiritual alignment. That was the lesson you've learned. This is five and this is five. 
you know the hierophant is the five so that's that's what's that's what you are you know going to be embarking upon and it's going to be victorious you're going to have a victorious outcome because you've taken the necessary steps we have uh, madonna and this is called lucky star so you definitely got some wish fulfillment here some blessings you're, you're going to have a victorious outcome you know you're going to have luck you're going to have wish fulfillment it's because of your your efforts it's because of the work that you've done why is this nine completion and the hangman here for the outcome so you have caring connections walking away door to value storm warning and then got the world see that so the world card represents completions this is something coming full circle this also speaks to gaining a deeper more profound understanding of the self so now you know that self you learned how to navigate daughter earth you've learned how to trust intuition you receive divine downloads and interventions you've been look at that i spoke to archangel Mikael and archangel Raphael's here even the strength card this is your energy so you have been pruned prodded for everything that you're going through your angels are protecting you that's why you're lucky because you have been prepared for this you weren't you were built for this this is what you were made for so whatever you've endured, that's why it says spiritual career here. That's why you were rejected. That's why you went through a whole process of learning. You know, you had to go through, you know, that dark night of the soul journey. And you've had to heal from whatever past pains, wounds, and traumas. You have all these angels that have showed up in your reading, you know. So that does speak to you being chosen. That does speak to you being blessed and highly favored. That does speak to you having a purpose. You know, there's a reason why you're here. This is the strength card. We were talking about your strength. You had to, you know, get rid of faulty belief systems, ideologies in order to embrace your truth, in order to embrace your power, in order to even acknowledge your own power. But this is what we have here on the bottom of the deck, the world along with the temple path. So it's as if spirit is saying because you have, you know, re you know, completed that cycle completed some sort of karmic cycle now you have been anointed now there is this you know almost like you have uh been initiated i should say to achieve great success or to uh embark on a particular uh, spiritual career with this completion these lessons you've learned you you have assessed your connections you've assessed the way people treat you the way they behave their love language with this 14 that's five that again is learning you're learning again you know what is your love language what do you deserve how do you desire to be treated so you walked away from the relationships the connections that were not honoring you and you set out to be single and independent this is the energy of walking away from things that don't honor you walking away from unnecessary arguments paying attention to your intuition and letting go and releasing that this could be the energy of whoever you're attracting to you with this nine completion and the storm warning this is just someone receiving the forewarning from spirit like look if you don't get out there it's only going to get worse this is a storm warning but the whole we could have a whole volcano come and sweep all of this up and it destroys everything in its path so it's just like are you going to continue dealing with that or are you going to walk away it's like spirit is providing someone you know, an opportunity to make a decision. That's why we saw the indecision card for the person that you are attracting to you. And that's why they're sitting here pondering and they will eventually get it. They will see something that they may have failed to see in the past. And that's why this completion is here because they're taking that time in hermit mode, you know, to assess the situation, to look at things for what they truly are. And that's when they're going to make this decision to walk away. To step away from the toxicity, the confusion, from feeling confined, and they're going to go towards connections that are more caring. And for that, they will be rewarded. The door to value opens up, just like the door to romance. So it's like when you make decisions that are for your best interest and you do things that are for you, for your betterment, spirit rewards you. When you sit here and act stuck and stagnant like you don't know what to do and all the answers are sitting in your face, then you everything that comes to you, 
is deserved because you're always getting uh, spirit is always giving you some sort of synchronized message. That's why that showed up. But there are rewards and there are blessings. You know, there's five and that four breaks down to nine. That's like the nine of pentacles. How you treat yourself is how you teach others how to treat you. So you teach others how to treat you based off how you treat yourself. And so I feel in this junction of your life, you're being very mindful to prioritize you, to love you first and foremost. You don't feel an obligation to appease anyone else before you feel comfortable, that level of comfort. So that's for that, you're going to be rewarded. Like spirit sees how much you love yourself. So it's going to bring things that are going to uh, bring joy and satisfaction into your life. And you can see that clearly with the blossoming abundance and the door to value and the door to romance. You know, you're very much aware. You already know this. You know, this is like I'm speaking to the choir because you've been this is what you've been pruned. Spirit is pruning you. This is powerful. That's why Archangel Mikael showed up. Archangel uh, Shamuel, Archangel Raphael, Uriel, all of these angels are showing up to show you like there, there's a, an, a, an anointing, you know, a calling on your life. So let's get some messages from my deck and then we're going to wrap it up. So we have laughter is contagious here on the bottom of the deck. So be sure to laugh. You know, laughter does, you know, keep you youthful, keeps you young, you know. I don't understand how people walk around screw face all the time. Me and my children must appear to be aliens to some folks because we're always laughing. We're always smiling. And some people, I feel like it literally irritates them. They literally give us the stinkest face when they see us laughing or just enjoying life, <laughs> being in the moment. You know, it's really interesting. So don't be one of those like smile. You know, smile, enjoy life, be thankful, wake up and say thank you for the breath of life, the gift of life. If your, teach hit, your feet hit the ground, that's a reason to be thankful. If you got a roof over your head, reason to be thankful. You got food in your fridge, reason to be thankful. If you got money in the bank, I don't care if it's $50, reason to be thankful. Because there's somewhere, somewhere in this world right now, someone's praying for something that you have that you take for granted. So we have to like self check. We got to check ourselves. But I say all of that to say, be, be, you know, smile more, be thankful when you smile and you laugh, like it said, it's contagious and it makes others, you know, put their defenses down. When you constantly screw face and got your guard up all the time, then that's what creates a world of just, you know, just chaos to me, just, you know, just nasty energy. So we got closer to you playing by Maxi Priest. So, yeah, that'll bring people closer to you and you have a warm aura, an inviting aura. So if you are trying to, you know, manifest certain things in your life, you got to lighten up a little bit. You got to lighten up, lighten up your load. I don't know who this is. Hold on one moment. All right, my bad, y'all. So infinite possibilities. Keep your head to the sky and keep trying. You got this. So dope. So that's beautiful. So that's what you did. You didn't give up. That's what this is. This is what you're saying to yourself. Keep my head to the sky and keep trying. Believe in you and it'll take you higher. That's what you did. You did not give up. You just kept on pushing. So it says knowing is half the battle. Now you must apply. So those lessons that you've been learning. See that? So the lessons you've been learning. Now spirit is telling you to apply what you've learned because when you apply it, that's when you start walking away from things that don't serve you. That's when you start unburdening yourself and relieving yourself of the burdens of, you know, perhaps overcompensating. But that's what that is. It's like knowing half the battle. So you found some things out or you've discovered some things, you know, that was pretty hurtful. But it's like now that's half of the battle. Now that you know. Getting over that initial uh, feeling of betrayal and hurt, that's half the battle. But now it's like now you got to navigate what you know and you have to apply what you've learned throughout the journey. So it says they're tuning into your channel, social media, driving by your home, looking at old pics, obsessed, secret, and Maya stalker alert. Didn't I tell you you had someone watching you? You had someone that was interested. And this is someone who's thinking and strategizing on how to manifest you back into their life. Someone who's definitely um, interested. Someone who's perhaps realized that they love you. We got happy here, surface. 
So maybe on the surface, you know, they appear to be happy and unbothered, but deep down, you know, they, they, they really have these reservations, these, this love, it could be, you know, obsession, you know, um, it could be a little bit of any of these things. It says stalker alert, secret admirer, and obsessed. So this is someone obviously you're familiar with. If they're looking at pictures of you, uh, maybe this is someone that's admiring you from social media account. Maybe you've gained, you know, the attention of someone unbeknownst to you. Um, but I do get a, feel, a feeling that like there's some, you know, you already know this person, you're acquainted with this person in some way. Uh, so we have Baba Ogun, breakthroughs, victory, success. And we also have Mama Oshun, beauty, love, attraction, you sexy thing. And I spoke to Mama Oshun in the beginning of the reading. So this person is absolutely attracted to you because they see you to be very beautiful and they are trying to manifest you. See this? So they find you to be very attractive and they look, they, they want the victory with you. This is someone that definitely wants the victory. So this person is um, what you are attracting, whether you're manifesting this or whoever this person is that's manifesting this. It's like there is a major, major breakthrough here. There's something vi that's ending very victorious for, vo victoriously for you. And I feel it's something that has been manifested. It's like some intention you've set, a spell you've done, a ritual that you've worked, um, something that you have been doing and you've been doing it intentionally, it's like it's coming through. I was saying victories and breakthroughs all throughout the reading, and it kept, it kept showing up. And how they feel about you is beauty and love. They feel you're very nurturing, caring, kind, but they feel tied up. With this cheesing from ear to ear, the courtship, let your guard down, and this is what's hidden in the energy. So I feel like you are coming into a spiritual partnership with partnership with someone that will become like your your divine counterpart your twin flame also because it says cheesing from ear to ear so not only are you going to be cheesing from the fact that things are very abundant and successful for you but also because of who is coming in and this is someone i feel you are already um aware like it's almost like you're, there's a a knowing because the seventh chakra is just saying like intuitively you are already expecting someone and with happy, this is going to make you very happy. That's why cheesing from ear to ear is playing and we got happy playing by surface. So someone is coming in that's going to bring a lot of happiness into your light, life. And I feel it's because you radiate love and light. So you're attracting that and that's just going to be amplified in whatever union this is because with this hierophant, both of you have learned lessons you've learned, you know, from these difficult connections, these, re, you know, relationships that were toxic, where you felt rejected, abandoned, left out in the cold, whatever. Um, it's like whatever you've learned from that in terms of what your love language is, in terms of what you how you value yourself. It's like now you're attracting that and then some. This is someone that's going to just like they're going to court you when you have someone courting you. That's someone that's taken the time to be thoughtful and caring and kind enough um, to show you how uh, valuable, valuable you are. That's why effort is here for what you're attracting to you. So it's like, this is someone intentional. This is someone coming in, um, that wants to make you smile. And it's, uh, we have Teddy Pendergrass and this is called, you're my latest, my greatest inspiration. So this is indeed the person that you have taught with the teaching and learning. This is someone who's inspired by you. This is why they saw you as the queen of Pentacles, very grounded, balanced, even the Empress, even more so. Uh, very nurturing, very powerful, very attractive, very loving, devoted, caring, kind, just embodies just regal and royalness. And it says you need a, a, a wusa, vacay, trip, spa day, mani petty. You deserve it. So you've worked hard, you know, you've worked very hard. Spirit sees how hard you've worked, how much you've studied. You know, you've mastered your craft. It's like you've learned a lot. And now that you have mastered your craft, it's like spirit is saying, take a break, take a little, take a little break. And someone is eat, like preying on your downfall also. So whoever this energy is, it's going to, you're going to have like some haters. There's going to be some folks that are like, they hate what they can't duplicate type of energy because they see you thrive and they see, you know, your spiritual careers popping. They see that you're very in tune, very tapped in. They may see you taking vacations because it says you need a wusa. So take a vacation, get a mani petty. So you could just be loving on you and there's going to be some hateful people looking at you. You know, I spoke on neighbors, um, you know, people that 
live in my community, you know, that when me and my children uh, just being our authentic selves and minding our own damn business, laughing, talking, joking, playing, you know, whatever we do, um, you just see these evil eyes watching, you know, people have so much disdain. And so those could be those type. Y'all may have some of that where you just be enjoying life. You could be just someone who minds your own business, but you may just catch somebody just looking at you with a stank face so there's going to be some haters there's going to be some folks that's preying on your downfall you know maybe they see you pursuing your own dreams maybe they see you embarking on something and and it could be a matter of projection you know projecting onto you how they really feel about themselves or deflecting from their own you know um inhibitions and trying to put it onto you like you think you all of that when you just minding your business doing you with as the world turns and that sun moon and stars there this is just speaking to being in spiritual alignment this is the world card in my deck and this is like really just you've gained a different perspective a deeper uh more profound understanding and knowledge of yourself um you're absolutely wiser you've you've wisened your dome um and you've learned valuable lessons in this process and it's because you've taken the time it's like spirit put you in a sacrificial position so that you can assess you know um and i feel like you did exactly that with your my latest my greatest inspiration I do feel like you are attracting you know someone that is going to be very loving very loyal very uh caring very devoted um and this is you know you're my latest my greatest inspiration so someone is very inspired um inspired by this union inspired by this connection so let's tap in so why is this nine completion here wow that was fast and finish the shuffle bottom of the deck we have as a bachi, ward off any demonic energy. So be mindful. Uh, do some cleanses. Do some spiritual baths. Because that's the second negative energy that came up with someone preying on your downfall. And now you have as a bachi. So you do got some evil eyes that are watching you. So you got to be mindful. But don't fret. You know, because you got Baba Ogun, Mama Oshun, you had Archangel Mikael, Shamuel, you had Archangel Uriel here. So you are protected. But with this energy, I feel like, and it says, um, Oh, no. Why did I pick that up? I'm tripping. I'm trying to show you this. So it says as a bachi and praying on your downfall. So just be mindful because there are some evil eyes. So this just shows that you're, whatever you're doing, um, you're successful at it. And that's the reason why folks are hating. Um, you could be in the spotlight or in the limelight. You could be helping people. You have a spiritual career. So maybe you do consultations. Maybe you do readings. Maybe you're a psychic. Maybe you're a channeler. Maybe you're someone who is like, you know, online. You could be a self um, like a, a, a self um, what do you call those coaches, a self-help coach or something like that? But, um, what we have here is they're addicted to you. Uh, this might be cause for alarm deal accordingly. So there is someone see, and with this storm warning and walking away. So per perhaps there's someone that could be, uh, kind of clinging to you. Uh, and this is that same energy because earlier we saw, um, that you had a secret admirer excuse me and now we have they're addicted so this could be someone who's like kind of teetering on you know the edge of like obsession like obsessively thinking of you obsessively wanting to be with you uh with emotional roller coaster ride uh yeah you you got off of some crazy train somebody was just sitting there playing round and round we go you know and you ain't have no time for that you wasn't on you wasn't here for that you know and this person brought a lot of drama a lot of arguments, a lot of unnecessary games, just, just, and just like playing emotional games. So this was like emotional manipulation, you know, highs and lows. But I feel like spirit just kind of told you, like, trust your intuition, trust what you feel. Um, and when the sooner you wrap that up, the sooner you could get rewarded, the sooner what's really meant for you can come in. Cause somebody's just addicted to you. Maybe they're addicted to your energy and that's why they come in. And that's why they constantly, playing games because they like looking for you to respond that you know any type of response that they get it feels like it's like this is what their intentions are is to have you feeling stuck and to feel you know because if you if somebody can like trigger you then you know that literally is just a sign that you know whoever angers you controls you so that's what they're trying to do is like they're trying to control you by angering you they're trying to control you by bringing hostility and drama that's the only way they could get a response. Spirit is telling you clearly, like, see what this person is doing. If you have somebody in your life doing that, walk away from that toxic relationship because love doesn't hurt. Love, do love isn't confusing. confusing. Love isn't something that you have to question. You, you will feel love, you know. 
The same way you love yourself is the same way others are expected to, to love you. So if you love yourself healthy, then you will know what healthy love is in return. So I feel this is some old negative energy trying to like bully their way in because they see that you're you're coming into a sacred connection. I want to get a couple more messages. I hope y'all don't mind. I want to pull some messages. I want to get um some messages from um an index. It's like an index uh card. It has uh initials, it has a couple of angel numbers, and it has some numbers. I mean angels um names we got a number 11 so remember i was speaking to uh you know your twin flame your soulmate this 11 breaks down to two also so that could be someone that's like a like mind someone could have been born in november on the 11th day or maybe you were born in october on the 29th someone could have been born on and we have um the charade so somebody's coming back playing games so just be mindful because this is a game we got three here this is someone who could have broke your heart so someone who broke your heart maybe in the past that was the person that learned you know that, that taught you a karmic lesson they could be coming back to play more games you know because you know that 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 mercury retrograde energy still lingers two weeks afterwards just like it you know you feel it two weeks prior to the you know to it uh going retrograde so the same thing is applicable like at the end so it just ended so you could be still dealing with a little residual uh, you know, Mercury retrograde energy where the past is trying to come back just to annoy you, you know. So let's tap in. So this 11, one half of the t uh, twin flame number I'm getting as well as I'm getting um, I'm getting justice. So karmic lessons have been learned with 11. That's justice. So you're getting you're reaping what you sowed. You're receiving things are turning out in your favor. And we have Mary Magdalene. So I was saying that you were what you you what you are attracting to you is a miracle wish fulfillment. Mary Magdalene in uh, another deck, she is uh, who uh, answers prayers and provides miracles. So Mary Magdalene, Baba Ogun, that's why this victory and this breakthrough is here. There's a wish fulfillment coming in. Someone is manifesting. I feel you all have either manifested some sort of blessing, some sort of rich um, um, miracle or someone to come into your life with this three on the bottom of the deck. I feel like this is just speaking to your divine femininity, being very beautiful, very attractive, very fertile at this time. Be mindful of your thoughts. Whatever you think of, whatever you ruminate and pine on the most is what you create. So be mindful of that. And we have um, lettuce, and this is called All Right. So with this energy, everything is already all right, is what I heard very loud in my mind's eye. And it's because you've already manifested. It's like you, your hard work from the past, whatever you've endured in the past. And I also feel like karmically, you're, you're going to be blissed. You, you're going to attract everything you desire. With this three, it's like you've reached that level of self-mastery. You're, you're, you're literally a very powerful master manifester, alchemist. You set intention, you create, you birth new styles, new ways of thinking. So this card was sticking up. Archangel Uriel, this is the second time Archangel Uriel showed up. So this is your crown chakra. So trust your intuition. I feel like spirit is saying that you're highly intuitive. So with this intuition, spirit is just telling you, trust your intuition. We got the number 10 here. So this is speaking to those completions, endings, Cycles completing, but this 10 reduces to one endings, new beginnings. So you have a new beginning, a spiritual career. And someone is preying on your downfall because they see that you are embarking on a new beginning and leaving them behind. So this is definitely with all right. Everything is going to be all right. Your angels assuring that you're, you're safe, you're protected. Nothing that these evil eye mofos is doing is going to harm you we got a yes answer i just heard yes i'm also hearing yaya my father's name was yaya um i'm also hearing um yasmin i'm hearing yin yang and you got the number one so manifesting your yin your yang to your yin it's like whoever the one is the main one whoever that one person is that you are thinking of right now as I speak speak to a yin yang that's that's the one 
So only you know who that is. But I'm also getting a sense of um, with this preying on your downfall, it's like this is someone who it's like because the one is the magician. So spirit could be saying like that one that's here, that thinking man, whoever that is manifesting you because they've showed up twice with this whatever you're attracting to you. So what, this is somebody that could be trying to like counter whatever you're attracting to you, whatever you're manifesting. They could be trying to block it or something. So I feel like spirit is just telling you to like be mindful of perhaps what you're sharing. Be mindful of what you what practices you're you're doing. Like just be mindful. So yin yang. I'm hearing yes, a yes answer. So you will be successful from some sort of spiritual career. I also heard the word yearning. So somebody's like yearning. And we got Archangel Raphael. So that's probably why I heard yearning. Because Archangel Raphael uh, was dealing with the heart chakra, the fourth chakra. So someone could be yearning for this connection, which is why they could be walking away from another you know, could be yearning for this. Like, this is what they envision. This is what they desire. But let's see what the cards have to say. Why is this nine completion? Hangman, walking away, storm warning, caring connections, door to value. They're addicted, emotional roller coaster. Archangel Raphael, I can't make this up. Came right back out. Came right back out. And we have Jay. So with this Jay, I just heard Justin, Justine, Jeffrey. Junior, Juni, James. I heard Jim, Jimmy, Jonathan, John, John, John. I heard Jen, Juni. I think I said that. Juno, Juan, Juanita, Wayne, Julio. But I also, I'm getting um, Jennifer. I'm hearing Jennifer, Jenny. But justice is the last word I heard as well. So justice, you're, you're receiving justice. This is like justice. Things are working out in your favor. I feel this is working out in your favor because you're doing what's best for you. It's like you're walking away from what doesn't serve you, what doesn't honor you, what doesn't value you anymore. That's why that Queen of Swords shows up because she just doesn't take too kindly to anyone insulting her intelligence or playing with her intelligence. Um, and she sees things clearly now because she's using head over heart. So this is a powerful energy. I'm feeling like your heart is open now. You know, you've had to learn from people who played games, like very childish type of energy with emotional roller coaster. That's, you know, almost like that, that uh, Knight of Wands, you know, kind of flighty, in and out, bothered, hot, heavy, then dis out, you know, disappear. Then you got they're addicted to you. So this is someone that is just like addicted to your energy. I was just feeling like somebody's addicted to your energy, especially when you are in this, you know, Mama Oshun vibration, just radiating all that love and light when you coming off as, a you know, the Queen of Pentacles or the Nine of Pentacles single, down to earth, earthy, in tune, connected, grounded. It's like you're going to attract a lot to you. And it's like you just have to um, trust your intuition. That's what Spirit said twice, like intuition, that's your crown. So there's going to be some synchronized moments or some divine interventions, downloads that spirit is going to be dropping on you, whether it be number synchronicities, whether it be animal totems, whether it be sensations, you know, whatever this is, it's like spirit is communicating with you and telling you something. Um, and I feel like it's because there may be a choice. There may be a decision you have to make because that indecision card showed up. And I was also uh, shown the two of wands card where there was, you know, he's just had a globe in his hand and he's embarking on this new endeavor. But it's like that could be you and your journey because you're literally about to, you know, 
relieve yourself of all of this, you know, and you're coming back to yourself, like you're getting back to the foundation, to uh, who you are. You know, you can see he's like getting back to to town, like to wherever he lives. He's could be, He's been on a journey for probably 10 years. You know, this could be 10 months. But he's been on a journey for quite some time and it's been a very arduous battle. It's been very difficult, but he's made it, you know, he's made it to his destination and he could relieve himself of the drama, you know, relieve himself of the trauma, the aggravation. We got uh, D'Angelo, so lady. So some of you ladies have been through something really, you know, toxic. You've had to take on that masculine energy, but now you're in harmony with yourself. You know, these these ones, like I said, that represents justice in the traditional tarot. But the ones also giving me like the ace of cups, the ace of wands, the ace of pentacles, the ace of swords. Like you get to that space where you have um, a deeper, more profound understanding and knowledge of self. Ones are the aces because those are the gifts from the divine for you to, you know, co-create with source. Use whatever element you need to channel that energy. And as you channel it, you own it. When you own it, you can start manifesting. That's how you're teaching others. Teaching others from the pain that you've had to turn to power. You're the conduit of change, Scorpio. So others are always going to learn from you. This is a powerful message, beloveds. Thank you so much for tuning in and tapping in. I hope the message has resonated. If you found that it did, please be kind. Hit the like, the share, the subscribe. Definitely hit the bell notification. Check out my consultation site. Book a reading today. Go check out my Etsy. I got some dope products on there as well. Um, but thank you so much for tuning and tapping in. I will that you all stay a while. If you are returning, you already know what it is. Love is love is love. Peace, love, and light. And it is what? It's 3.31, which is 7 on the clock. So that's 7. That's your intuition as well. That's spirit. We're in a seven universal year. Today is a new moon. So use that energy to the best of your ability. Tap into your into your inner mal uh, alchemist, your inner magi. All right. But thank you so much for tuning in. Tapping in. Till next time. Peace.